Okay, this is part two. So in part one, I considered a frictionless block sliding down a plane. And I found the speed at the end and the acceleration. And then I did it again for a rolling disc. And this has a mass M and a radius R, and that has a mass M. And the answer was that this was going faster at the bottom and had a greater acceleration. But I used the work energy principle. Now let me redo this using the momentum principle and the angular momentum principle. So the momentum principle says that the net force on an object is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time, which is also equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to use this mass times acceleration version, even though it's, I mean, I, I consider it to be the same thing. And then let me go ahead and say that the angular momentum principle torque net about some point O is equal to the change in angular momentum over the change in time. So in one dimension, uh, I mean, in, yeah, one dimension, if I consider this fixed in the plane so it can't do weird stuff, the net torque about some point O is going to be the change in angular momentum, which is I delta omega delta T, which is I alpha, where alpha is the angular acceleration delta omega over delta T. Okay, so let's do the block first, and this one is actually not too difficult. I'm just going to find the acceleration, and then we could find the final velocity at the end and compare, but I just, I just want to do that first. So I'm going to start with the block. I'm going to draw the forces on it, just like I did before. I have the downward gravitational force. I have a normal force at an angle. And I'm going to call this my x-axis, and this and so there's a geometry trick. Uh, I use it all the time, and I don't know that I want to uh, go over it again, but this angle is the same as that angle. And you could convince yourself, if this is a plane and it's going back down to zero, then the gravitational force would be in the same direction as the y direction. So I can write the net this equation as F net x equals m a x F net y equals zero. So this is zero because the acceleration in this direction is zero. So the forces have to add up to zero. So this means that I have the normal force minus the component in the y direction of the gravitational force. So this is the adjacent side of that triangle. So this is going to be mg cosine theta equals zero. And I could solve for n right there, but it turns out I don't need it. If I look at the x direction, I have only one force acts in the x direction, and that's this component of the gravitational force. So that's the sine. So I get mg sine theta equals max. So now I can divide both sides by m, and I get ax equals g sine theta. That's what I got before when I did the work energy uh, in a roundabout way. So that that's good. Now let's look at the cylinder. So I have three forces acting on this one. I have the gravitational force. I have the normal force. And then I have this backwards pushing frictional force. So in this case, um, I, I can't, I could do the same thing. The net force in the x direction, the net force in the y direction, F net y equals zero. Um, and it, it would be the same thing, N minus mg cosine theta. Now for the x direction, I have this, F net x equals mg sine theta, just like before, but then I have that frictional force, minus the frictional force. And you know what? I can't get a value for that. You could say, oh, well, look, you could you calculate the normal force and use that to calculate the frictional force, and that would give it to you. Yes, except that that would give me the, that wouldn't give me, I can't use that equation because it depends on the, it's a force of constraint. Remember the frictional force the magnitude is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So I can only know what it is, okay? But I need to find it. If I could find that force, then I could solve this for the acceleration. So let's look at this from a torque perspective. 
So if I say this is my point O, net torque about O equals I alpha. So I need the moment of inertia and I need the torque. What's well, a disk? So the moment of inertia is one half m r squared. The torque is exerted by the frictional force. So the torque, the only force that exerts a torque because these pass through the center, is going to be the frictional force times r. So and it doesn't really matter that this should be negative and that should be negative. I'm just going to leave it positive for now because it doesn't matter. So if I put this together, I get F friction times R equals the moment of inertia, one half M R squared times alpha. And now I need to do something because I could cancel this. If this is rolling without slipping, if rolling, without slipping, then alpha is going to be equal to A over R. Is that right? Meters per, yeah. That has to be true. There has to be a relationship between the angular rotation acceleration and the linear acceleration, otherwise it would slip. Okay, so that has to be true. So if I substitute that in and solve for F, I get, which I already did, I get F friction equals one half M R times A over R. Check that out. R is canceled. So one half M A. And this is AX. So now I can substitute this in up here. So now I get MG sine theta minus one half M A equals M A. So if I add that to both sides, I get the mass is all canceled. So I get G sine theta is one half A plus A, which is going to be, this is two, two thirds A. Did I get that before? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you get to that point where like, wait a second. Now if I multiply both sides by three halves, I get A equals three halves G sine theta. Is that what I got? I got two thirds. One half. Oh, this is. See? Three halves. See, if you add one half plus one, you get three halves, not two thirds. That was my fault. So I get A equals two thirds G sine theta, which is the same as before. Yay! Okay, I'm not going to calculate the final velocity because I think I've done enough, uh, but you could do that if it so pleases you. Okay, I think I'm done with this. I'll talk to you later.